In this video, I'll show you how to use mesh models in Mujo Co. In previous videos, we've been working with primitive geometries, boxes, spheres, and cylinders to build 3D models. While these are great for learning and simple setups, they're not ideal when trying to create complex or realistic shapes. For that, we typically use 3D models generated from CAD software like SolidWorks. So today, I'll walk you through how to import CAD generated meshes into Mujo Co. And as an example, we'll model a pneumatic cylinder using these mesh files. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's a good time. Click that like and subscribe button to support the channel and help me make more educational content like this. We'll begin by creating a folder named meshes and I'll copy my 3D.stl files into it. Then, I'll create a new XML file. As usual, we start with the Majoko tag. Next, we'll set up the compiler tag to specify the mesh directory so Mujoko knows where to look for the files. This makes our XML cleaner and avoids repetitive path declarations. With that set, we can now create mesh assets. Inside the asset tag, I'll define each mesh using the mesh tag. For example, we'll import the cylinder.stl file like this and repeat the process for all other parts. Once that's done, we'll load the model into Mujo Co. Now it's time to use those mesh assets to create bodies in the scene. We'll add a world body, and within that, a subbody called pneumatic underscore cylinder. The pneumatic cylinder consists of two main parts, the cylinder and the piston. Each will be defined as a child body. First, I'll create the cylinder body. Inside this body, instead of using primitive types like box or sphere, I'll use type equals mesh in the geometrical tag and reference the appropriate mesh asset. When I reload the scene, we should now see the cylinder. Next, I'll add another mesh for branding. It prints the channel name on the body of the cylinder. You might notice I didn't use the POS or Euler attributes to align the two meshes. That's because I made sure the mesh coordinate systems were already aligned during export from CAD, so they fit together perfectly by default. Let's now add the piston body and attach a sliding joint to it. When we test this, you'll see the piston pulls out awkwardly. That's because in Mujo Co, the entire volume of the mesh is considered for collision, which is not what we want in this case. To fix this, we disable collision for the visual mesh by setting the appropriate collision parameters in the geometry tag. After reloading, the piston now slides freely without any unwanted collisions. But of course, this means there's now no collision at all. So to simulate realistic contact, we'll add dedicated collision surfaces. These can be created using built-in geometries, but aligning them correctly is often tricky. A better approach is to export separate collision meshes from your CAD software, containing just the necessary surfaces. I've already done that. So now I'll go ahead and add those collision meshes to the cylinder and piston bodies. You'll now see the correct collision zones, like at the front and back of the cylinder. Dragging the piston now shows that collisions behave correctly. Next, we'll set joint limits using the range parameter. Let's say from zero to one meter. Wait, that looks off. The original CAD model was created at a 1 colon 1 scale, so the piston travels a full meter. We need to scale the meshes down. I'll apply a scale equals 0.001 to all the mesh tags to convert from millimeters to meters. Reloading the scene, now it looks just right. I'll also add joint damping for smoother motion. Finally, let's add an actuator to control the piston and two collision sensors to detect when the piston is fully extended or retracted.
And that's it. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to wait for it. Subscribe.